Hey guys, it's Will here and today, as you probably saw from the title of the video, I'm going to show you how I paint a chain rasp. Uh, I've been painting a few of these recently because I've been working on the Night Vault set. Um, so there's obviously the, uh, the Night Haunt Warband in there, contains a fair few chain rasp. Um, but the techniques for this will work for other Night Haunt models as well. What I've tried to do, despite the fact I'm only painting a small number of them really, I've tried to come up with a technique that would work for a much larger army of these because generally if you're going to be painting a good number of these you want in units of like 20, 30, 40 in a night haunt army. So I didn't want a scheme that was going to take forever to do, just wanted something quick and simple that was still going to look nice. So uh, that's where we're heading with this. So without further ado, let's dive on in and see the model we're painting today. So I've got the chain rasp that I'm going to be painting here and as you can see I've already built him and base coated in white. Um, using white because we're going to be starting off with the first proper colour being Night Haunt Gloom and this is quite a transparent colour that needs to be applied over a white base in most cases. Uh, but you'll notice that in some places the um, the base colour, the um, the coloured plastic underneath is still showing through. So I'm just going to give this a quick coat of white scar just to make sure that he's all, he's got good coverage. So we've got a nice base for the night haunt gloom to go down on. Now, um, normally with the uh, chain rasp and sort of units like that that come in hordes, you're going to want to do these as a batch. I usually do anything from four to six or seven models when I batch paint, but uh, you know you can go up to ten. So what you do when you batch paint is you apply one colour to one model and then um, leave it uh, while that one's drying. You do the next one and you sort of get a production line of anything from you know three to seven or eight or ten. I've even heard tale of people doing 15, 20 on a batch paint, but uh, yeah. Um, this one, obviously, just painting the one for the purposes of this video. So you just want to get a nice smooth coat of this on there. And once that's dry, we can then go on to start using the Night Haunt Gloom. So now that the white's dry, we can apply the Night Haunt Gloom. But just want to say a few things about this before I do it. So um, this is a technical paint and uh, Night Hall Gloom and it's uh, sort of compatriot hex rate flame and also the Nylac Oxide from the earlier technical range are um, a little bit like washes. They have that sort of consistency to them, but they've got a bit more pigment to them. Um, and so they tend to cover a lot more than washes. So they're, they're great for applying over white to give sort of a, the start of a ghostly effect. Now, any three of these any one of these three are perfectly suitable for doing night haunts, but I've decided to use the night haunt gloom because uh, they, um, like I say, all three of them are are good. But I wanted to um, keep the hex ray flame for doing some of the uh, the more sort of uh, glowy details on the model. So uh, this one doesn't have many of them, but some of these have uh, like little. Um, evil looking flames and I thought you know what I'll, I'll keep the hex ray flame for doing those and the nylac oxide um, I've already got um, quite a few sort of ghostly type models painted in that so I wanted to uh, give one of these other ones a go hence that's not been used um, so yeah we're just covering over all the bits that are going to be this sort of ghostly main body it's kind of like robes kind of almost like ectoplasm sort of stuff coming off this and you want to give a good sort of coat over all of this, but trying to avoid it pooling too much. It will, because it is a uh, kind of a wash, will pool in the recesses, but you want to uh, not have it pull too thickly. Uh, and you'll need to get up inside in these bits as well, which I might do off camera because that's going to be a bit fiddly. But um, the trick with this is make sure you get good coverage. You only need a single coat with this. You shouldn't need to go back and add a second coat. Um, but you want to make sure that you get everywhere because if you sort of get halfway through the model and realise you've missed a bit with this, then uh, it's uh, going to be a right pain to fix it. Whereas if you go too far, like I've gone a bit onto the axe there, that's fine because we're going to be painting over that with a different colour later anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll just round that off off camera and then show you how we're going to highlight this. Once that's completely dry, it's time to start building up the layers on the robes. And for this, we're going to start off with Ulthuan Grey. Um, so this is a very light colour, um, which means we're having quite a big jump 
between the very light, uh, very dark um, Nighthaunt Gloom and the very light Ulthwan Grey. So the way I'm going to do this, um, and it's I've tried several different miniatures to, uh, you know, several different ways of doing this on several miniatures, and the way I think we're going to do it is to have a very watered down Ulthwan Grey to start off with. So I've added quite a lot of water to this, so as you see as I'm applying it, and that's probably still a bit too thick there. So um, just thinning it down so it's going to go on not quite as a wash, it's still a layer, but it's a very thin layer. Um, so you're still going to be able to see some of the Nighthawk gloom through there as we layer this up. Now in the deepest recesses, we're going to leave it completely in the, um, the Nighthawk gloom, but in the raised areas, we're going to have this thinned down um, Othwan Grey. It's a little bit of a, a judgment on how much to thin it down. You still want to, uh, you know, get some coverage on there and not have it out of control, but you want it thin enough that you can still see the colour underneath. We're doing this over all of the robes um, and also the parts of the model that are also going to be this lighter colour like the, uh, the skin here. And once this is done, it's going to look a little bit messy because uh, it's not really like the final effect. This is just going to be one stage towards it. So don't worry if this does look like a bit of a mess by the time this stage is done. You still want, you're still going to uh, add another couple of stages on top of it. So right now this looks to be a bit of a streaky mess once that's dried, but this is actually okay. This will um, look quite good once it's finished. So we're going back to the, um, Ulthwan Grey again, but this time we're going to dry brush it. So this time you actually, you don't want to add any water to your paint and you want to brush as much of it off on a piece of tissue paper as possible. And then start just going over the model like this, um, with like a, a back and forth motion. And you can see this is just catching the raised areas. And you've now starting to get that transition between in the deep recesses, you've got this almost back to the original colour, the um, the Nighthawk Gloom, whereas on the raised areas you've got this much lighter colour. Um, go around the back as well, and you go over the whole model like this, being careful not to over apply this. The key with dry brushing is you can always add more, but you can't really take it away and it's very hard to go back over it. So you want to add less to start with and build it up if you feel you need to. So you can see here, you know, got the dark colour in the recesses and it's gradually transitioning in what is hopefully quite a, a spooky way up to, uh, um, you know, the lighter colour. We're going to go over all of this and then we're going to give it a final dry brush in um, pure white as well. So um, uh, what's that called? White scar. And that's just going to uh, highlight this a bit more. So this first dry brush, you need to, you know, do a reasonable amount, the second dry brush is going to be much lighter. So moving on to the dry brush of White Scar now, and this is going to be a much lighter dry brush, like I said, so you still want to keep a good amount of that Orthwang Grey visible, with just the White Scar catching the raised areas to uh, continue the transition. Um, and so this shouldn't take too long because you need to apply much less of it. Um, I did, when I first tried practicing painting these guys, um, go just the Ulthwan Grey dry brush and then the White Scar dry brush without the uh, the step of the more sort of uh, wet layering in the middle. But I found that it gave too stark a transition between the dark and the light colour um, that just didn't look right. And I find this just gives an overall nicer finish on the model. So you've got that much smoother transition. Um, and it's still relatively quick to do, you know, that is the only really slow step is the, uh, the layering and even that's not particularly slow, it's quicker in real life than it is on the camera because I'm not trying to film it as well. Um, and then the dry brushing, well dry brushing is always a really quick step which is uh, important for horde units like this if you, you know, want to do a whole army of them and I'm just painting them for night, horn, uh, night vault night vault but if you wanted to paint a whole night horns army you would uh, obviously need to paint quite a few of these so uh, that's basically done now and then I'm gonna wash off my brush and once that's done then I'll uh, start to add some of the other colors so we can go from just a model with some spooky bits 
to a model with some actual detail on it. So now that we've got the uh, the spooky parts of the model done, we can start adding the details. So uh, I'm going to need three colours first to base coat these in. XV88 for all the wooden components, Lead Belcher for the metallic components, and Abaddon Black for the black um, sort of shroud that he's wearing. And uh, with, when you're applying these, it is important that you uh, um, apply them quite carefully to not go over the bits you've already painted because trying to fix bits that you've already dry brushed is a bit fiddly. Um, so uh, yeah, that's part of the reason we uh, we do that first because it can get a bit, a bit messy, but uh, trying to fix it is fiddly. So try and uh, be careful around his thing here. I'm going to actually switch to a smaller brush for that. So things like the axe handle obviously are going to be wood as is this uh, big old plank of wood that's nailed to his arm here. So we're going to do that and then move on to the next colour. Then once that's dry we're going to do all the metallic parts in lead belcher. So we've got bits like the, uh, the chain here and uh, he's got this uh, metallic ball obviously on the end of the chain and the axe head, things like that. Um, and just a few little details around the model like there's this uh, nail going into the back of the wooden board here. Um, this is a little bit fiddlier to do because you've got to be careful not to uh, get all the other bits of the model and the metal does tend to intertwine with it a little bit more. So I'm going to do some of this off camera with a smaller brush but just as a general guide, uh, lead belcher carefully over all the metallic parts. So now that the metallic and wooden parts are done, we're just going to do the shroud in Abaddon Black. Um, and this uh, won't be the final colour for it. Um, we are going to highlight this up a bit um, and it will probably get messy and then redone. But I just like getting it done at this stage to uh, sort of uh, show where everything's going to be on the model. So I can uh, see which bits are going to be which. And uh, yeah, so we're just carefully applying this. Again, making sure not to get it on any of the bits that are meant to be that sort of spooky lighter colour. So the uh, black on the shroud's all dry now, and although it's not dried to a completely perfect finish, that's okay because we're going to go back and do it with a second coat anyway, because we're going to use a little bit more dry brushing on parts of the model later on, um, and that might mess that up a little bit, so uh, that's fine. For now it's good because it's just blocked out where the colour's going to be. So now we're going to give the wooden and metallic parts a wash, and the nice thing about this is we can use the same wash for both of them. So we've got Agrax Earthshade, and just applying that to all the bits that we've just done in XV88 or in um, uh, Lead Belcher, just to give them um, a good shade. Um, and we're using uh, this on both of the both colours um, because it's going to make the metal look a bit more sort of old and dirty. I tend to for more sort of clean me um, mechanical metals I like to go for um, null oil rather than Agrax Earthshade but for, for things like this where it would actually benefit from looking a bit grubby you know um, Agrax Earthshade is great and it works nicely for the wood as well so just make sure that's covering all of those bits without getting on other parts of the model. So once that wash is completely dry, you're going to do a little bit of dry brushing to bring out the highlights of those parts. So starting up with Stormhost Silver, and we're just going to dry brush that on the metallic parts. And I'm using um, an old brush rather than a dedicated dry brush here, because the dry brushes tend to be quite large. Whereas this is actually an old, worn out, small layer brush, so it has um, a bit more control. And the, uh, the dry brushing here is... Uh, the important to just keep it on the metallic parts which is why we're using a smaller brush and this is bringing up the uh, the highlight on the metals um, just making sure to do all of this without getting it on any other parts and uh, yeah then we're going to go on and dry brush the wooden parts once this is done and that dry brush on the wooden parts is going to be with XV88 um, and this plank here is uh, the main sort of area to focus on, on this particular model but uh, they all have various different wooden parts around them, or at least the majority of them do. So we're just dry brushing that to bring out the detail and a little bit on the axe as well. Um, the thing whenever you're dry brushing is just to build it up gradually. You can always add more, but you can't really take it away. Um, 
And once we've done that, that's most of the detail done and we really just need to work on the base, which I'm not going to do as part of the tutorial, but uh, I'm going to do this shroud here next. So just the shroud to do now and for that um, we're going to obviously start off with uh, the black, so this is Abaddon black. And before we start layering up I just want to tidy up any of the bits that have uh, been uh, been covered over as we've been dry brushing other areas of the model. Um, part of the reason doing this last so that any dry brushing um, that went awry could uh, be tidied up. So I'm just going to do that and then we're going to move on to layering this. So now that's all tidied up, we're going to uh, do two layers of highlight on that. First with Eschen Grey and then after that with Dawnstone. Now you could just dry brush this with Dawnstone, but I've gone for a layered effect because this is going to be one of the first parts of the model that catches your eye. And, um, you know, I'm only doing a relatively small number of them, so you can get away with doing a layer. But if you're uh, wanting to do a very large army of these quickly, you could dry brush them. So on this, um, we're just catching all the raised areas with this, just carefully layering that on, leaving the majority of it in the black, because you don't want this to look like it's grey with a, a black shade. You want to look like it's black and then where the light's catching, it's showing as grey just to give it that three dimensional look. Um, so with the first highlight, you don't have to be um, you know, doing very fine lines, you want to cover, you know, a little bit of area because we're going to do a second highlight on that. And the idea of this is that you get the, the transition from the black through to the dark grey and the light grey, rather than having the very stark contrast of black to light grey. So uh, this is going to take me a little bit of time to do, but as you can see, we're just picking out all the raised surfaces and uh, then we'll come back and do the second highlight once that's done. And as I said, that second highlight is going to be with Dawnstone. And because this is a much finer highlight, I've moved to my smallest brush, the Artificial la Artificer Layer Brush. So we're just giving it a very fine edge highlight on all the raised areas. So, uh, you know, the edges, sort of the tops of, of the folds in the cloth. And uh, again, as with many things, you want to take it light to start with and add more if you feel you need to. Um, there are some some of the folds you might not even do much of this on at all. It's just uh, you know picking out the more raised areas of the model. Um, so I'm going to finish this up um, off camera because it's just a bit fiddly to do. But this is the only really um, fiddly part. The rest of it is just uh, you know take your time, be neat, and uh, I say take your time with dry brushing. You really don't take much time at all that's one of the great things about it and uh, why I've used a lot of dry brushing on this model because uh, you know it's easy to do and that's going to be great for painting hordes of these guys but just switch into this for the, the final details to really make the model pop. So that's done now um, and as you can see the highlights all applied but to really make this model look good I'm going to do the basing now and I'm not going to tutorial it because uh, we all have our own different techniques for basing and obviously you know there's there's many ways to do that um, but I just think by doing the base it's going to show what the model really looks like once it's done. So that's the base done and as you can see because I'm using one of the models from the Night Vault set I've just painted the detail on there. Obviously if you're painting a uh, chain rasp from you know just the general box set that doesn't have this scenic base then you know you'd just do whatever your normal basing is. I uh, didn't want to overcomplicate that um, but basically the stonework on there is um, Mechanica standard grey washed with um, null oil and then dry brushed up through Mechanica standard grey dawnstone and finally um, oh what is that colour called administratum grey uh, which just gives a nice sort of uh, grey sort of uh, um, paving slab type effect and this would work quite nicely for gravestones as well. Um, so the model is basically done at this point but there is one more thing I've decided I want to do to him um, just to give him a little bit more sort of points of interest. I'm going to do a little bit of rusting um, and I meant to mention this earlier in the video but uh, it slipped my mind but we're going to do a bit of, uh, bit of weathering and rusting on this guy because you know this is like a a ghost who may have been dead for a very long time, his weapons could quite legitimately be quite rusty. So for this we're going to need Typhus Corrosion, 
XV88, and then I'm using blazing orange here, but pretty much any orange, um, sort of a mid-tone orange will, will do, you know, you don't want anything too light, you don't want anything too dark, you know, just a sort of a middle, can be quite bright orange. So starting off with the typhus corrosion, and because this is a technical, you can work with it straight from the pot, you don't need to thin it down or anything on a palette. And just picking out a few points of metal on here, um, just to sort of, uh, you know, do, do as rust. This kind of, uh, it's quite sort of thick, it's got like fine particles in it that, uh, you know, make it sort of almost uh, a bit, bit gloopy. It's a, it's a funny sort of a paint. Um, but it works really well for this and it helps to give it a bit of rusty texture as well as just the rusty colour. Um, do a little bit on the back of this chain here and I'm going to do it around the um, the haft of the axe. I'm not actually going to do the axe head rusting, which got a bit too much of me brush this, so I'm just washing it off. I'm not going to do too much around the actual head of the axe, um, the cutting edge, because uh, being regularly used will usually uh, save that from going too rusty but uh, you know around the uh, the, the um, where the head meets the half there that will will rust up quite nicely there and you know we'll do this uh, this side of the nail through his hand there as well so anyway that's that and this takes a little while to dry and then it's just going to be two quick dry brushes to finish off this effect so once that's dry we're just going to give this a dry brush in XV88 and once again, I'm using kind of a, an older um, layer brush for this rather than an actual dry brush because the GW dry brushes tend to come in somewhat larger sizes than we need for this. So we're just catching sort of the top areas. And what you will notice, part of the reason I like using Typhus Corrosion, is it um, gives a little bit of texture to it. So when you dry brush over it, you're not just picking out the traditionally raised areas, but you're also picking out areas where... Uh, that the typhus corrosion has just given this a little bit of a texture and uh, you can even afford to go slightly onto bits of the metal that you didn't originally put the typhus corrosion on because you know rust is a little bit of a, a random effect so you know it's not the end of the world if it uh, spreads out a little bit but there we go that's starting to look quite dirty now but for the proper rusty look we're going to switch to the um, orange and just very light dry brush in that so moving on to the blazing orange, and you just want to do this very lightly, um, just to uh, you know catch a little bit of the raised area where it has, you know, fully rusted. Um, just to uh, you know make some points of interest on the model, uh, and you can always add more if you're not happy with it. So you know start off light and uh, gradually build it up but I'm pretty much happy with how that is looking now. Um, and the nice thing about a dry brush as well is that you don't have any drying time on it. So uh, yeah, our little chain rasp is done now. Um, and hopefully this has been a, a quite a simple painting technique that you know you can replicate fairly easy. There's nothing overly complicated with this. Um, and that's the idea with chain rasp. Obviously, you know, you're gonna have hordes of the things, so might as well do a quick job. And even in, uh, um, Night Vault where uh, you know you only have a warband of seven that's still one of the largest warbands in the game so you know it's uh, you know they're a hordy type army anyway uh, let me know what you think of this and thanks a lot for watching I'll see you guys again soon bye